Hello everyone, my name is Kate. I'm an educator at the Loveland Living Planet Aquarium. And as part of World Oceans Week, I'm going to show you a simple microplastic experiment where you can see how microplastics are in your cosmetics and day-to-day -day products. Here I have a glass of warm water and I'm just going to put a tiny bit of this product in that water. And then we're going to aid the separation of the plastic and the, and the product by gently stirring. And once you can see that things start separating, plastics will start to float or to sink. You can gently and slowly pour it into a filter paper. Make sure that there's something to catch the water on the other side. And this will help extract all the microplastics in those cos cosmetics. I have a filter paper here that has already been used. You can see there's a lot of dense, smaller microplastics in the middle, and as well as some larger pink ones. But how do we know these are microplastics and where did they come from? Microplastics are put into products, sometimes on purpose to add texture or to use as a preservative, but sometimes they can flake off the packaging that was used or different tools used in the factories to make these products as well. Microplastics are usually five millimeters across. Anything bigger than that, we consider to be macroplastics. Here are some really great examples of these macroplastics. And as you can imagine, when you wash your face or your makeup off or even your sunscreen, these tiny little microplastics have a really easy time making their way into sewer systems and even into local ecosystems or all the way to the ocean. These macroplastics kind of work the same. They can be pushed into the ocean through inland rivers and they have a big effect on marine and our local ecosystems. All of these were extracted from the stomach of an albatross, which is a type of seabird. Now, one million seabirds die every year from plastic pollution because they starve when their stomach is full. But other animals that don't eat like an albatross, which is skimming the surface for smaller fish and other kinds of marine life, those animals can be affected as well. When they eat smaller organisms that might accidentally have ate plastics, they are also eating those plastic particles inside of those organisms. So plastic can make its way all the way up the food chain, even to us humans, which are usually found at the very top of that food chain. Now these plastics can cause a lot of different things. They have a very rigid and porous surface, so they hold on to any toxins they encounter. Now, this is a common knowledge of marine ecosystems that microplastics are very common. But here in Utah, we pull 42 tons of plastic waste out of the Jordan River every single year. The Jordan River leads directly into the Great Salt Lake, which is an essential ecosystem for people that live here in Utah, as well as animals all around the world. 16% of pelican populations are born and raised at the Great Salt Lake and 90% of table salts that were tested found to have microplastics in them. So we are consuming microplastics. The best way that we can help this plastic pollution problem is to use the reduce, reuse, recycle model like steps. First, reduce your plastic consumption as much as you feel comfortable. This could look different for everyone. Then reuse the containers and packaging that you already have by refilling them at bulk stores or buying secondhand. Then recycle whatever is left over. This will help everyone have a positive impact on our connected global ecosystem. Be sure to check back on our social media channels every day at 3 o'clock for more content from World Oceans Week.